The Awakening, the revised edition by Lilac Moon. Chapter 30, Forced to Flee. Padme opened her sleep-filled eyes as she heard the baby start a fuss over the baby monitor. She looked at Chrono and saw that it was just after dawn. Anakin's side of the bed was empty, but he wasn't far, for he had just got up and was meditating. She got out of bed and found her robe, quickly wrapping it around her unclothed body before padding next door to the nursery. She cooed to her baby as she gently picked him up and cradled him. Good morning, sweetheart, Padme cooed as she sat down in the rocking chair. Carefully, she shrugged her robe off one shoulder and put him to her breast and he began to eat greedily. She smiled at him and gently stroked his tiny face in a soothing manner as he drank. Once he finished, she burped him and changed his diaper. There, all dry. Let's go say good morning to daddy. Padme said. Jaden smiled at her as she exited the nursery and headed downstairs to the veranda. Anakin sensed them and turned to her with a smile. Jaden babbled incoherently as he spotted his father. Morning, little man, he said as he kissed the baby's head before kissing his wife tenderly. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Padme said. He shook his head. You can never disturb me. There's nothing I want more than to be with my family. He replied. She smiled. Which is why I think we should spend the whole day together, Anakin added. But aren't you training with Luke? Padme asked. Ahsoka and Ben can handle it. I'd like spending the day with Ryu and Pooja. So I thought I should take the baby out and spend the day in the meadow. We can take a picnic and show this little guy where his mummy and daddy fell in love. Anakin suggested. Padme beamed a bright smile. That sounds like the most wonderful idea, Padme replied. He smiled. Good. I'll take him so you can clean up and then we'll switch, Anakin said, as she handed him the baby. Padme kissed him tenderly before hurrying upstairs to clean up for their special outing. Cad Bane stood on the outskirts of Theed. Only Aura was with him, and the rest of their hired hands were lying low and waiting for the word. What a quaint little city, Bane said sarcastically. Aura snorted in disgust. I know, I can feel the bile rising in my throat. It figures that I'm a daughter from a place like this. So pretty and perfect, just like her. Aura growled. That is Aura. You'll get your chance to have some fun with her, Bane promised. So, where do we start? Surely they're not in feed, because that would be stupid, Aura said. No, but we'll start to ask around. Even Theod has its scum. That will talk for a few credits. I'm willing to bet that someone knows something, Bane said as they descended into the city. Salar carried a breakfast tray onto the veranda and set it down. Good morning, Rain said. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Salar asked. I did. I have here for the past year as well. This is the most peaceful place I've ever been. Rex said. Yes, Ferenkino is a one-of-a-kind place where we can be protected. No matter what's going on outside. That's why we'll have to leave soon, if we want to preserve the secrecy of this place. Sala replied. So you're going with us? Rex asked. Sala nodded. I thought my sister was dead for 18 years. And now we're closer than we've ever been. I'm not letting her go again. Sala replied. I'm glad you'll be coming. I'd really miss you if you weren't. Rex admitted. I'd miss you too. And you're part of the reason I'm coming. Padme and the children are another, and I know my mother will be very disapproving. But after Darad died, I felt like I was no longer a part of anything. My husband was dead, and my girls were grown. Then Padme came back into our lives, and I was a part of something again. And I want to be part of the group of people that's finally going to free the galaxy. Sadar said. Rex put his hand on hers. You're just as special as your sister. I want you to know that. Rex said. Salah smiled and blushed. Never in a million years did she think she could ever fall in love after Darad. But she was. Rex was nothing like his clone brethren, and every bit his own man. A man that she was falling in love with. Thanks, she replied. What do you say we take a walk later? He asked. She smiled and nodded. I'd like that a lot, she replied, as they drank their morning cuff together. It was a perfect day for a picnic, 
and they relaxed on a blanket in the grass with the baby. Jaden giggled, clapping his hands, as Anakin floated a few of his toys around in the air. He was three months old, and he was just beginning to discover his voice and the movement of his own body. Padme rested his back against her, as he was still learning to sit up without falling over. You love it when Daddy does magic, don't you? Padme could. Someday you'll learn how to do this too, little man. Anakin said. Yes, because you'll be just like your daddy. But Mummy wants you to stay this side for a while. Padme said. Anakin nodded. So do I. For the next few years, we're going to be the centre of his world. Anakin mentioned. That suits me just fine, Padme said. Anakin smiled. Me too. You could stay baby forever for all I care. Anakin added. Padme kissed him softly before handing Jaden to him and standing up. Come on, she urged. Where are you going? he asked. I think we should take him for a walk to the falls, while we tell him the story of the first time we were here together, in this meadow, and how we fell in love. He can't understand it yet, but I'd like to relive it myself, she said. He smiled and stood up, shifting the baby in front so he could see his surroundings. He understands enough. He knows that we love him, and we love each other, Anakin said, as he put his free arm around her, and they began walking. Do you want to start, or should I? Padme asked. Anakin smiled. Jaden, you're about to hear the best and most romantic love story you'll ever hear. And it all started when the most beautiful angel walked into the junk shop I'd worked in when I was just a boy, and stole my heart forever. Anakin began, making Padme smile as they walked towards the majestic waterfalls in the distance. Cad Bane entered a cantina in the worst part of Theed, with Aura Singh behind him. They approached the bar and both ordered a drink, as they scanned the place. Here you are, the bartender said as he delivered their drinks. I'm looking for some information. Do you know anyone? Bane said, as he paid for the drinks, plus a substantial tip. The bartender took the credit and glanced up at him. If it's information you're looking for, then you should talk to Keck over there, bartender said, pointing to a scurvy-looking old man in the corner. If there's anything happening on Naboo, he knows about it. In his prime, he was a bounty hunter, much like his elves. He lost his livelihood when a Jedi sliced off his right leg in a scuffle many years ago. So now he lives off stories of his glory days, and helps your lot stamp out what little good there is left in this galaxy. Don't get much time for his kind, but he keeps paying me for his drinks, so I let him frequent him. He's your guy for information, so get your information and then see yourselves out. But the bartender said sternly, as he went back to work. Kane smirked. Oh, I can smell him from here. Do I have to get closer? Aura said. Everyone I'll pay to, then yes. Bane replied. Aura sighed. The things we do for money, she said with a smirk. Are you Kirk? Bane asked, as the man puffed on a death stick. Depends on who's asking, the man replied in a growly voice. Card Bane, and this is my associate, Aura Singh. We're hunting a bounty, and we've been told you can give us vital information. Bane said. The man grinned, showing his dirty, rotting teeth. Bounty hunter, though. I'd be happy to assist. So, who's the prey? He asked. A Jedi, Bane said. The man snarled. Filthy stinking Jedi. Got cut down on my prime by one of those damned wizards. Lost a fortune too. He growled. Aura seeing a rolled her eyes impatiently. Well, we're looking for a Jedi named Anakin Skywalker. Bane said. Keck snorted. Yeah, he is around, I reckon. But no one's seen him. The way I figure it... Is he uses those freakish powers to make people forget they've seen him. Keck said. In other words, you're just wasting our time. Aura replied. Hold on, woman. Just because I ain't seen him doesn't mean I don't know nothing. He said. Then what can you tell us? Bane said. Well, I've been hearing that Senator Naberi has been seen frequenting a small harbour town near Lake Country called Valencina. called Valencia. Keg said. What does that have to do with anything? Aura Singh said impatiently. She has been seen with her older sister, and lately another young brunette just around her age. 
I've been hearing that this little brunette is related to her somehow. They say she looks an awful lot like the not-so-late Amidala. Keck replied, Bane smirked. You've been most helpful, Bane said, as he dropped a handful of credits onto the table. Pleasure doing business with you. Hope you get that Jedi, Keck said. Don't worry. I will, Bane said, as he and Aura walked out and hopped onto their speeder. Bane brought up the map on the speeder's nav computer and found Valencia. It's only a few hours from here. We wait for this girl to come into town and we grab her. Then Skywalker will come right to us. Bane said, How can we be sure that this girl is any relation to Amidala? Aura asked. The uncanny resemblance suggests that she's Amidala's daughter, which means she's also Skywalker's, Bane replied as he punched the throttle down, speeding away. So, what do you think? Pooja asked as she held up the dress. They were in the town's small dress shop, and then they would be on their way to the market to pick up a few groceries for Jobel. It's beautiful! You should get it! Leia replied. Don't you think you have enough dresses? Ryu asked. A girl can never have too many dresses, Ruja replied, as she put the dress up on the counter to pay for it. The shop owner smiled at the girls as she rang it up. The sun glistened in through the shop window, and even though Leia's back to it, she saw the light fade for a moment, as if someone passed by, and momentarily blocking it with their shadow. But then, she felt the hairs on the back of her neck stand up suddenly. She turned and looked out of the window. But when she found no one there, she turned away, figuring she was just being paranoid. We should get back to the market and go home. Leia told her cousins. Leia's right. We wasted enough time here. We're supposed to be back by now, Ryu said impatiently. Okay, we're going, Pooja replied. But as they exited the shop together, the bad feeling Leia had quickly returned, and now she could see why. A frightening-looking woman with orange-coloured hair worn in a ponytail atop her head and wearing a tight bodysuit stood in their path. We need to get out of here, Leia said, as she turned the other way and found an even more frightening looking man in their path. He wore a tall billed hat and was a species Leia was unfamiliar with, but she could sense the evil in his heart. Well, hello there, pretty one, he rasped. Touch me and I'll scream. Then my father will be here before you can blink, Leia threatened. It was a bluff, even though she knew it would take her father time to get to here from the lake house. Oh. I'm counting on it. In fact, I know your father like I think I do. He's already sensing that you're in trouble, and he's on his way. Which is exactly what I want. She heard the cousins yelp in fear as Aura Sing leveled her blaster at them. Bus, are you sure she's Skywalker's kid? Aura asked. Bane smirked as Leia yelped as he held her face in his hand. Look at this voice. The resemblance to Armadonna is uncanny. Which means this is definitely Skywalker's little girl, Bane said. Aura smirked. Then I guess we'll just get them back to the ship and wait for our payday to come to us, she said. Bane nodded. Exactly. As they arrived back at the house, after spending the afternoon by the falls and in the meadow, Jaden was starting to fuss. And Padme smiled. I'm going to take him in and nurse him, she said. He nodded and she kissed him softly. Today was absolutely wonderful, thank you, she added. He smiled at her and caressed her cheek. It certainly was romantic, though spending time with you always is, he replied as he kissed her again. But suddenly a look of horror washed over his face and Padme frowned. Anakin, what is it? Padme asked. It's Leia, she's in danger, we've been found, Anakin exclaimed as he took her hand and ran inside the house. He wasn't surprised to see Obi-Wan there to meet them. I felt the disturbance too. Leia, Ryu and Pooja went into Valencia this afternoon, Obi-Wan told them. Someone asked them, which means they know we're here. We've got to get off Naboo, Anakin said. I'll get everyone on the Falcon. You go after the girls, Obi-Wan said. Luke and Ahsoka, you're with me. Let's go, Anakin called. Annie, they have Leia? Padme asked. He nodded. Don't worry, I'm going to get her and the girls back. Go with Obi-Wan and Rex. We'll meet up with you soon, Anakin told her. Tears welled in her eyes. 
be careful. Please, she pleaded. He kissed her passionately. I will, Angel. No one will separate this family. Never again, he promised, as he hurried off in a sprint, with Luke and Ahsoka flanking him. R2 has the ship filled with supplies, food and clothes. Grab only what you can carry. We have to leave now. Obi-Wan called. Sala put her arms around Padme as her little sister started to cry. Jaden sensed his mother's distress and began to sob as well. Padme, it's okay. Anakin will save her. Sola tried to assure her. Padme shook her head. You don't understand. Last time Anakin went off into battle, I nearly lost him. Padme said as she broke down sobbing. I know, sweetie. But that's not going to happen this time. Anakin won't let it. He'll save our daughters and we'll leave here together, Sala assured. Padme started to calm down and nodded. Come on, Sala said, as she grabbed the baby bag she always had ready and led Padme out. I don't believe this. We're just going to up and leave, Jobal cried. We have to, Mrs. Naberi. I'm afraid we are no longer safe here. Obi-Wan told her as he led Satine towards the door with Annie in her arms. In order to preserve the secret location of their beloved Varakina, they would have to abruptly leave it behind. Anakin brought the speeder to a halt in the pier of the small port down of Valencia. He hopped out with Luke and Ahsoka flanking him. As they rounded the corner and started down an alleyway that would lead to the centre of town, a man stood in their way and he had Leia as his captive. Anakin stopped as he glared at the bounty hunter that he knew all too well. Bane! Ahsoka said. Who's Bane? Luke asked. A bounty hunter that used to give us a lot of trouble. Ahsoka answered as they heard Bane chuckle. Well, well, well. Anakin Skywalker. A long time no see. Bane goaded. Let her go, Bane. Anakin demanded. Oh no, she and I were just getting to know each other. She's as pretty as her mother. But she showed me she has your temper. My associate got a little angry and gave her this nice little shiner on her cheek for trying to get away. Bane said, as they noticed the red mark on Leia's cheek. Your associate will regret laying a hand on her, and your business is with me. So let my daughter go, Anakin growled. Bane chuckled. You haven't changed at all. Still irrevocably attached to your pretty senator and your Padawan, I see. You certainly were busy, too, if it seems. Since the boy next to you has to be your kid, too. Bane chuckled. I don't know who you are, but you better let my sister go! Luke called as he started to advance on him. Anakin stopped him by putting a hand out, blocking Luke. The young Padawan stood down and waited for his father's lead. You're right. You and I have a lot of unfinished business. I was actually almost sad all those years ago when I heard you were supposedly dead. We never got a chance to settle our score. So, naturally, when I found out you were indeed alive and that Vader had put a price as big as Coruscant on your head, I knew I had to be the one to collect, Bane said as he drew his blaster. So, here's how this is going to work. You come with me, and once I have you in these special force-resistant shackles I acquired, your little girl can go free and unharmed. Bane said. Fine. As long as you leave my family alone. But I need to see that my nieces are also unharmed and released. Anakin agreed. Daddy, no! You can't! Leia cried as she struggled against Bane. She could tell he was serious, and she had never doubted that he would absolutely do anything for them especially if it meant guaranteeing their safety. Sorry, princess, but if it means keeping you, your brothers and your mother safe, then I have no choice. Anakin told her. Bane chuckled. The fierce Jedi general turned a noble family man. <laughs> Bane laughed, finding it quite funny. Leia's eyes filled with determination as she sunk her teeth into Bane's forearm. He cried out in pain and hit her on the back of the head with the butt of his blaster. Anakin took action and toppled Bane to the floor, as Luke helped his disorientated twin sister. Bane kicked Anakin off and they faced off, as Bane drew a long curved blade from a scabbard on his back and Anakin ignited his sabre. 
don't think you're getting away so easily. This blade was constructed to withstand the heat of a lightsaber. Bane warned. We'll see. Because there's no way in hell I'm letting you hurt my family. Anakin replied, as Bane launched at him, their blades clashing. Aura Singh waited impatiently. If things had gone smoothly, then Bane would have been back by now. Which meant he had engaged Skywalker. He was counting on her to grab someone else close to him, if he didn't return quickly. Let's get to the port, boys, and find his friends, Aura said as they set out for the ship port. One thing Bane wasn't counting on was her agreement was bother fat. She raised her comlink to her lips. Bane has engaged Skywalker. I would get it down here if I were you. If things go sour for Bane, then you can swoop in. But I get half for letting you in on this. Aura said, Agreed. I'm almost there, Bane replied. Aura smirked. If you left your pretty little wife without any your protection, then you'll soon be regretting it, Skywalker. Aura said as the port was now in sight. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Oh, ho, 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 that's dangerous. But I love that Leia bit him in the arm and made him let her go. Love that. And Luke immediately going to his sister. That's cute. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.